This week on the show, we're featuring Striped Obsidian, River Quartz 3 under the microscope cam, eclairs on Why'd I Buy That, eight new jokes, and high fructose corniness. Oh, where's my opener joke? Problems with going on late. Okay. Ah, I figured out what crop circles are. They're really big Martian language for out of order. Speaking of which, let's start the show. Fell asleep? Oh no. Oh, that's something that I would, I'll cause that again. So don't worry, I'll put you back to sleep, Colette. How you doing? Glad you're here. Don't forget the bot. Thanks for reminding me. Yes, the bot is here. You can throw tomatoes at Jacob for being late. I woke up and I was like, what time is it? I'm like, oh, I'm 20 minutes late. No, I'm an hour and 20 minutes late. And then Tom Kelly had, um, which the link is the link I posted. Tom Kelly was interviewing Sheba Mason, which I was like, oh, wow, really? Because when I was in New York City, I actually got to meet, meet Sheba. And I got to see her perform at the Three Monkeys Comedy Club. She organizes a comedy show there. It's awesome. So cool. I was like, oh man, I, did, I, I didn't want to miss that interview. And I didn't want to miss my show. And I did both. Mostly. But here we are. I forgive you, Jacob. I appreciate you, Colette. Thanks for... Thanks for reminding me that I'm not always problems. Uh, what a positive reinforcing comment for a positive reinforcing show. Where is... My clicker. Blam. Whoa, hey. There I am. And there you are. How how do you do? So this uh lovely piece of striped obsidian, I'm glad you made it, Colette, because actually this is something out of the box that you sent me. Boxes that you sent me of obsidian. And I greatly appreciate it because this is some really cool stuff. Okay, so there we have the big Stripe it obsidian, we split apart one of them. And a chip came off of it. Got to find the chip. Couple chips, actually, because we made that little circle ring piece and sent it to you. I never actually did feature that one. This one here. Never actually did feature this because I didn't get the picture for it. But I wanted to make something out of what you sent me and get it back to you. So I was like, all right. 
So we put it on a ring and sent it out. So that way you could enjoy it. Because I really appreciate the help with the show. Wanted to make sure I got you something for it. Hmm. Wondering if I can find the chipping it off piece. Now you got to check out the Tom Kelly Show episode that I, I posted that link to. I'm going to post it again. Um, hi, Sharice. How's it going? I hope you, you got through your your um, your rough... You, you were helping with that hurricane and everything. And I got some family down there. They posted that they were okay. But uh, I appreciate you helping out their friends and neighbors down there, Sharice. And it's great to hear from you. I thought about replying, but you said that you were going to get back to it. And I didn't want to overload you with another email. And so... Um, yeah, I, I appreciate you you helping out, and I'm glad you're doing okay, and I hope everything went well this week. I was wondering if I could find the video close-up of that splitting. I know I've played it before. I just don't know where it is. I don't want to spend another hour being later for the show trying to find the video. Because I have all the rest of the video from the rough to the finish little bitty chip working on that piece of opal for Colette's ring running out of time gotta get it the other ring the more important ear ring no nah, it's not in there it's gonna be somewhere before that I think it's in the middle of a chunk of video and I don't have it labeled so where's the first part bing It's got, like, gold shimmer in it, in the right light. I put a video on my Instagram, a little, you know, five-second video. And in just the right light, it's got the stripes, right? But it's got, like, this gold shimmer that shoots across it. I'll try to get it to show under the microscope cam. Speaking of microscope cam, how about a close-up on this Mountain Dew? We got to get the mountain, because the mountain's made of rocks, right? It's a really big rock. It's a really big stone, and we're shaping stones. And Colette said that some of this came from Glass Butte, which is a, a mountain of obsidian. Look at that. Yep, just took that edge right off of there. It was so thin, that little wing on the edge of it, it was so thin that... If I'd have tried to use even my little Dremel with a diamond wheel, it would have flaked apart. There wouldn't have been anything left. But because, like, even after I got the chunk off of there, there'd been, like, such a small piece, but then trying to shape it... Because the, the obsidian, it has no crystal structure, so when you get into a part of it, it, it cracks and flakes and it colloids, which is, um... You know when you hit a piece of glass or something... And like the edge of a glass table, like like let's say you got the edge of a glass table, and it it makes that like like C shape. I always remember it because it's the C shape, and the word is colloid, which starts with a C. And it's like a C shape with another C shape and another C shape in it, and it's like stepped. Yeah, that's a colloid break. In Oregon, ooh, the spicy state. I like to put oregano on my spaghetti. Mmm, <sighs> delicious. Okay, so... What do we got going on? Some sort of show? How are you doing? Glad you're here. See, what are we doing anyways? Microscope portion. Let's get that fired up. Because I'm excited about doing this River Quartz number three. Because I made some good progress on it. I'm going to make it into an ice cream cone. That's right. And not only am I going to make it into an ice cream cone, I'm going to show you the ice creaminess of this cone in about three minutes. Getting the microscope cam fired up here. Got to get it plugged in. That's part of the problem is plugging things in. See, desktop. 
Open in new window. You gotta say window because there's an H. It's it's a silent H, but it's also uh, an invisible H. Oh, you know what you guys gotta tune in for is Gene Kim's live stream on Facebook. Are you all interested in checking out a live stream on Facebook on Sundays? She does it at about 3 p.m. Eastern. And she does it over and over, which is awesome. So if you can't make one, you can make another one. And she invited me to... Yep, happens every gem. Drop almost every single gem I cut. Sheesh. Anyways, um... So I went to New York to do the uh, Gladys, Gladys's um, open. I gotta turn on the microscope cam. And when I was doing, um, Tom Kelly put me in touch with Gladys, and Gladys does the online open mics. So I started doing those, so that I could prepare to go to New York. And when I was doing those, I met Gene Kim who organizes the Gladys online open mic. And Jean also does, Jeannie also does an open mic online on Sundays. It's a fun little friends and such open mic. I am going to find this gem. I did find it. I found it, and here it is right now under the microscope cam. Yes. It even has this colloid on the edge, so you can actually see what I was talking about. And I thought about trying to work it out, but I didn't want to eat too much into the surface. This is the natural break. This surface here is the natural break in the stone. I thought it had a good texture, and it had a good sheen, and I didn't want to lose it. So notice it's it's got the, the stripes, but then in the right light, it's got that gold shimmer. That shimmer that moves around. Yeah, I really like this stuff. This is this is really cool stuff. And my favorite seller on eBay had some rough striped obsidian. Look at that gold shimmer. This is a really unique, beautiful piece of stone. One of a kind, you know? That's one of the things that I do on the show here. Another thing I do is go live late. That's probably why everybody's like, wait, where was he? And, oh man, I miss you guys so much. See, here's about the size of it. That's the size of the striped obsidian dome chip. It's kind of a triangle, kind of a bowed triangle, kind of like a... Kind of like a uh, guitar pick. That's what I was thinking. Yep, dropping it some more. It's a slippery stone, I tell you what. So you wouldn't want to play guitar with it, because then you'd just be like, na 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 whoops, dropped it, hold on, na 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 oops, dropped it. Whole show long, just dropping the stone. Anyways, that's the striped obsidian, and that's why I'm so excited about it. Uh-oh, I'm so excited, I forgot to play the second video. Where are we at? Striped obsidian number two... And then you can see me kind of round out the edges. See the size of that colloid in the bottom there? Wound up getting rid of some of that. There. Yep. Rough. Big old chunk, chippy chunk. So I left a little bit of it in because I didn't want to tear into it too much. The red is not showing up very well. Nah, it's pretty dark under this uh, microscope area. But it's very obvious in real life. I mean, it's like, there. That's about how, well, actually, if you look at the, the video, boop, poke, 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 poke. That's the actual redliness of the stripe. That's what shows up in the daylight. That's what shows up in the nightlight. Nighttime light. Evening, when you have the light on and you're at your house and there's the light. Oh yeah, I forgot to change over the uh, the chat <laughs> the chatbot drops, which isn't a problem, actually, because um, we got it's dropping James Draper's 
uh, Link, which is fine, because he's an awesome guy who had me do a set at Grease Monkeys last night. That was awesome. Wish y'all could have been there. I didn't even get the video. I completely forgot to set up my camera. What is it about me and being forgetful lately? Man, just screwing up. What is that, like three things today that I did not make happen? Didn't get my show started on time. Didn't get to the Tom Kelly show on time. Didn't record my set at Grease Monkeys last night. Three things. Oh, man. Gotta get out the chopping block for me and my brain. I wonder if they have, like, elephant supplements that'll help me remember. And I'm just loving that shimmer. Isn't that a thing? It's great. Thanks, Colette. Thanks for sending that out. The back of it's pretty, too. Oh, yeah, I was going to show the back side of it. I like that. I like the back side. It's got this triangle. And here's where I feel talented. I got that triangle lined up. I mean, the triangle's there, but if I get one of the sides off, like, you know, I'm doing the sides, and one of the sides kind of like this, or one of the sides is kind of like that. It's not centered. Right? It's like you, your triangle is like elongated on one side. Or the other. And it doesn't meet. Got that pretty well centered, didn't I? It's, an, it's, a, it's pretty even. And you know, the, the stripes and everything aren't 100% even. They're a little bit off themselves. But still, it lined up pretty well. That is pretty. Thank you. Did I miss the why did I buy this? No, Sharice, you did not miss the why did I buy that. This week, it's miniature eclairs. And that's coming up next. But I wanted to show this chunk of river quartz under the microscope cam. Which, I gotta say, James Draper said that he watched the show back again, and he said he liked the microscope portion too. Which he thought that we were getting really close up so actually, let me let me do that with the obsidian. Because he was like, oh, I thought we were getting right up in there. And no, James, we, we it, the microscope isn't that powerful. Although Colette and I did look into that. There's a piece of lint. You can see the fibers that our clothings are made of. But that's the thing is that we're not actually getting into the the really, really close fibers. Like, think to really zoom in on that fiber, right? We're not actually getting to that point with the microscope cam. Just kind of showing a close-up of the gem. Letting people look at the gem a little bit closer. Where's that colloid at? There we go. Now you can see the breakout. See how there's no crystal structure? It just kind of breaks out where it wants to. Kind of like my show this week. Just just going live whenever I want to. Just problems. Problems galore. That'd be my stage name, right? Like if I was a character on James Bond. That'd be problems galore. Final video, number three, evening it out. Bling, okay, so this is the river quartz. We're getting into it. It's got some inclusion in it. But if you notice, there's like a, a, a yellowness on the one side and not the other side until I turn it and then it becomes both sides. And it's kind of a problem because of the lighting. Hmm. It's getting there. It's It's got some clarity in it. It's got some inclusions in it. I need to sand the top to get rid of those uh, 240 grit scratches in it actually that might be from the 100 grit and i just stuck it on the thousand grit to kind of polish it down so that we could see into it a little bit or at least try well there we go 
So now you can kind of see that, that yellow going across there as I turn it, which is the flare that's coming through on the gem. And so it's got like this ice cream cone type shape going on. And so next week I'm going to try and have it pretty close to being done. And then maybe the following week we'll feature it. I'm going to just do flat side, flat side, and then domey side. And I'm not sure if I'm going to get rid of this or if I'm going to go ahead and put a window in it. And uh, then we can see some of the inclusions. I don't know. Either way, it's kind of cool because I found it, you know, down by the river. First stone I actually found and mined and have been carving on and am happy with. Because I found a few of them, like I found a few of them in concrete, found a few of them in, you know, driveway stones, but that's not the same. This one washed up on the shore of the river. It's pretty cool. I'll show you how big it is. You want to see how big it is? You want to see how big it really is? So, yeah, there's the, the river quartz. It's turning out, right? It's pretty cool. I think it looks better on the webcam than it does on the microscope cam. You'll really get to see it when we feature it. It's going to be awesome. Like all of you. Is it your birthday? Yeah, it was, it was my birthday. Um, Thursday, I want to say. It was my Thursday birthday. Okay, so... Let's see, where were we? Talking about things under the microscope cam. So there is the stones that we have for this week. I think I'm going to do this roto light, but I've got... I've got to even it out. I've got this little piece of a roto light. And it's got these two chips in this face. I don't know, it's getting kind of thin. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to straighten it out. I, it's such a nice piece of roto light. I'd hate to screw it up by trying to do it by hand when I could put it on the faceter and have it be really nice. But even then, I'm not sure if it would turn out right or not. See how clean it is? How red it is? Nice piece of roto light. It's really more pyro colored. got a lot of that pyro red but it's got a little bit of almondine in it I don't know we'll see and maybe those problems won't be that big of a deal if I make this the top of the stone which I was planning on doing because like like you know how the 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 facets on the stone catch the light and in this way they make for that black edge going around it which just makes the stone darker. But if I flip it over like this, then it makes it makes the edge of the stone a little bit lighter. I mean, the camera makes it darker, but in person, it makes that area of the stone lighter. And we'll see that on the video when we get the, the video up here, not the microscope over there. There. Kind of a lighter edge on it. Nice red piece. Like my shirt. Bing! It matches the shirt, you know? And that is what I have for the microscope portion. And if I can't do that roto light next week, I don't know, maybe we'll do the chunk of appetite or some blue aventurine. I got some of those. We could do some of that, or or maybe even like a piece of iolite. It's been a little while since I've done some iolite. It's got some blue, but it's got a lot of inclusion in it, this, this piece of iolite. There's so much inclusion. A little bit of blue, but it's so dark. I'm not sure. Yeah, there's so much opaqueness to it. You can see all the layers. Need to straighten it out, get rid of that problem, polish it up a little more. We'll have to take a look. Anyways, you know what I was doing? I was at the grocery store, 
taking a look at what they had to eat. Yeah. You know what I saw? Miniature eclairs. Yeah. Stay away from the fat foods, Jacob. But I can't because I like them. They're delicious. So, in the middle of the shelving picture, down on the bottom, hiding behind the door, it's kind of, you see the green Marie Callender's boxes? Go all the way down to the upside down coconut one. And the boxes below that, the boxes next to them, are these tubs. You can get a tub. Get a whole tub full of mini eclairs. And they're so good. They got chocolate on them. And they got little filling in them. And they're flaky. And you can eat them when they're frozen. And they melt in my mouth. Mm-hmm. Delicious. Yes. That's why I bought them. And they're not that expensive either. I can't remember. I want to say it was like five something for a whole tub full. I will say that, the you know, after a few of them, they're kind of waxy. They're not actually as delicious as I would like them to be. They, they put a lot of wax in there. But the idea of eating them is fun. And the fact that they have the crunch and the flaky chewiness and the creamy fillingness, it makes for an all-around nice treat. And I really only get like one of them a year. And so I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot they existed. That's kind of the nice thing about eating them once a year is I'm like, oh, right, they exist. I'm going to try those again. And so I did. I picked them up and I bought them. And that's why I bought that. Charisse, have you ever bought mini eclairs? And which ones did you buy? And why did you buy that? These are the only mini eclairs that I know of that Walmart has. They might have some fresh eclairs, like some bigger ones. I mean, it's Walmart. They're probably going to have some big ones. But they would probably be over in the, like, pastry section. And I don't know. It's such a big store. I, I get tired of walking around. I'm like, I need, a you know, a cup of water and some encouragement to keep walking through that store. They need a finish line, you know, like an actual, like, tape and some people cheering you on when you actually make it out of that store. That would be Walmart for me. I'll take two tubs. Oh, yeah, one for each foot, right? So you can wash your feet in the tubs when you're done. That just sounds like a great idea. You shopped when hungry. That's what happened. Yes. Is it garnet? Yes, it is. It's a beautiful red garnet. I shopped. Happy belated birthday. Well, thank you very much. You guys are fantastic. I love you both. I love you all for coming by, even if you're watching this late. And I love you for trying to come by when I didn't go live on time, which I'm 99% sour about. Here's the 1% why. is because I have the chance to tell you to go over and check out that Tom Kelly Show interview with Sheba Mason because I actually got to meet Sheba while I was in New York City. It was so cool. I got to see her do a set and all that stuff. No, I have not, Jacob. I don't like sweets very much, dear. Oh, you don't like sweets, but you do like to eat deer. I understand. Yeah, people eat those all the time around here because they're, they're ubiquitous. They're, the, like, the local authorities will actually um, hire people. Like, they'll, they'll give out um, extra deer tickets for people to go out and hunt the deer because they become a nuisance for cars. And um, not, not so much cars as corn. The, they start eating the corn. It's like, and it's like, oh, what do you mean? A few deer are eating too much? No, it's like, think about um, grasshoppers. Grasshoppers become so plentiful, they ruin crops. But not only do they ruin crops, they ruin the local ecosystem. They start eating, like, all the aphid population and stuff like that. Well, it's the same thing with the deer. The deer will become so ubiquitous that they'll eat off certain flower types. And then those flower types become endangered. And then that hurt harms, you know, some of the local bugs. And so then some of the local bugs uh, become so, so endangered that, you know, some of the frogs start dying out. And it's, it's all about keeping balance. You know, we're, we're, 
We're not supposed to take too many of them, but sometimes we can help it when the, there's too many of them. So that's kind of how that works. I like popcorn. Oh, Sharice. Yes, we did talk about that, didn't we? Cheesy popcorn, caramel popcorn. Oh, where is caramel pop? I, I, I actually, that's another thing. I've got some Peridot, but I can't show it because it's in the laboratory being worked on right now so that I can feature it, like I said, in a couple of weeks. And it's turning out pretty good. I think it's going to be sort of a spire. It's going to be an inspiring spire. Much like the white eye by that portion of the show. And yes, Sharice, I need to stay away from the sweets. I've been eating too many sweets this year. I cut back a lot of weight last year. And uh, I've been hovering. Hovering. I... I almost got my six pack to show. I mean, I've got, actually it's showing a little bit, but I could really tighten that up if I just put in the last two miles, last two notches of my belt. Uh, <laughs> actually, I here's what's cool is I did run out of notches on my belt. I wound up having to make an extra notch on the belt. Yeah. In the laboratory, well, call it, actually, I started calling it that because that's where I used to do a lot of my invention um, development. Ooh, we're out of video, which means we got to get to the joke portion of the program. I'm keeping you all too late. Okay, what do I have for jokes? Not much, but I think there's a couple of good ones. I hope you're going to like it. One of them is about buying sweets. Yeah, that's right. I bought some donuts. I got this whole bit about donuts, and I think we went through the donuts last week, right? Yeah, I did, actually, and I didn't even do it during the joke portion. So here's a here's a funny story. I I talked about donuts last week, and I went back and I tagged it in the show, and I liked it so much, I wound up telling it at Grease Monkeys, and I told it at the Jukebox Comedy Club, and it got some laughs. So now, it like, this story I told about donuts is a joke. And I added a little bit to it. Because I was talking about how I can't decide which donut I'm going to buy. And I can't decide which donut I'm going to eat. So then I start eating them and I pass out in a food coma. But here's the first part is that uh, I like I liked the donuts, you know. I go into the convenience store. I see them in that beautiful glass VIP case. Very important pastries. Breathing their own air because they're too good for our air. Then I really like them. But I know that these attractive donuts are not destined for greatness. At the end of the day, they're going to be thrown out. And I don't want them living out in a dumpster behind a convenience store. I want to give them a good home. You know. Which reminds me, I found out why they call them donuts. It's because when I eat them, I get a spare tire. And so, you know, I decided to buy the donuts. And... When I bought them, the clerk asked me if I want a receipt. I said, no, absolutely not. I want no financial evidence of my overeating. So I bought the donuts and I ate the donuts. And that's the rest of the joke is that I, I you know, I, I can't decide which one I'm going to buy. I can't decide which one I'm going to eat. So I start eating a little of this one and a little of that one. And before you know it, I'm full, but I'm not going to stop. You know, I'm a man. I can eat more donuts than any man. And so I'm eating all of these donuts and I, I'm i too full. So then I just have to eat the tops off of the donuts and lick the filling out in some sort of perverted manner. And before you know it, I'm passed out in a food coma with most of a dozen donuts gone and nothing but remnants. Evidence. Of parts of my life gone wrong in a box on my lap while I snore. So in order to help myself with the dating world, I've switched to eating salads. That's right. Ham salad, crab salad, beer and bacon mac and cheese salad. That's my plan to slim down. And that's 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 why I can't eat donuts. You know what else I noticed while I was at the, the convenience store is that the lottery was really high this week. Yeah, that's right. The lottery was up almost $2 billion, and I decided to buy a ticket. Not because I thought I was going to win. Just because if I ever meet the winner, I'll be able to tell him I helped. You know, I helped out. You owe me a favor. Oh, man, I tell you, I'm so backwoods. I don't 
just get the hiccups. I get the hiccups. That's a terrible joke. We had to. It all had. It had to go downhill after the last one, right? Um. Oh yeah, that reminds me. It's in terms of donuts. You know, they they do cause me to put on weight. But see, I'm blaming it on the moon being in high tide. Yeah, it's kind of nice when the moon is in high tide because that gives me a great excuse for putting all the all this water weight. Um. Oh, this is about comedy competitions. I realize that funny people never win comedy competitions, which tells me that if I ever win one, I'm gonna I'm gonna be worried. No, I need to rewrite that joke so that it's actually funny, and it will keep me from winning a comedy competition. Maybe I should tell it as it is, and then I'll actually win a prize. If Bugs Bunny worked for the mob, he'd be Bugsy Bunny. Oh, oh, I, I realized that crop circles are just really, really giant alien language for out of order. Kind of like when a uh, vending machine is out of order, but they just labeled our entire planet like that. And last but not least, I think I need a therapist. Yeah. But I don't want an actual psychologist. Psychiatrist. Psychologist writes prescriptions. Psychiatrist is one that talks to you. I don't want an actual psychiatrist. Wait, did I get that right? No. So, yes. Backwards. I don't... Okay, I need a therapist. You can tell, right? I don't want an actual psychologist. I just want someone that will hear me complain and tell me I'm right. So basically, I want the in-person version of social media. Kind of like when you get a chance, you should come to the joke-off session and... Hear the in-person version of the joke portion of the program. Why don't I have that line? Oh, yeah, because sometimes I play the video. We got to get that to where it lines up. Right? Bing. And then I'll just move it next week. Yep. Pretty much. I wonder if I could make a new joke portion of the vote program outro something like that either way thank you both for coming by thank you all for being a fantastic audience if you get a chance and you're bored or if you just want some really good entertainment where did i put that link i should have copied it check out sheba mason's interview on the tom kelly show and be nice to sheba she's awesome um I got to meet her in person, and I'm hoping she'll give me a spot at Three Monkeys Comedy Bar. Actually, it, um, I don't know if I'm going to uh, be going up there in March or not, or maybe, it, maybe it'll be April. Um, I was just thinking when it gets warm out again, you know. It's like, what? It's so cold out. I can't even imagine going up to New York and, and feeling the cold. Because I'm used to going to Chicago when it's cold. Man, the wind, they call it the Windy City. The wind coming off the lake, it, it could, it'll could it freeze a popsicle even colder. Hey, Kiwi Claw made it. All right, just in time for me to tell everyone how awesome they are. That makes perfect sense. Now, I um uh, Actually, I, I would like to go up to New York again in the spring and do some more comedy. But either way, she was funny. And she's breaking into the acting game. She's she's doing a play, and um, it's about Jackie Mason, her dad. And that's why I need to watch the rest of the Tom Kelly show. I missed the first part, so I, I'm not even... I think Jackie Mason's her dad. Or isn't? Or they thought they were? I don't know. I gotta tune in so I can find out, right? But that was the 1% of the reason that I'm not sour about going late, is that I was able to tell you all about this awesome chance to go and meet somebody that I met and is funny in New York. It was really cool. So anyways, talking about meeting people, I'm glad that I got to meet all of you and I'm glad that you made it for the show this week, even though I was late. Next week, I'm going to do it on time. I need to do it on time. I like doing it on time. I like being on time. I like time in general. That's why I like having time. And that's why I'm going to try and do this next time at 9 p.m. Eastern. 
Go out and make it a great week. You have the power to do so because you're awesome.